Everybody, we ready? And... Yep, yep, right. Seven seconds ago. All right, welcome everyone to the first Maryland Makerspace hosted by Maryland's Commitment to Veterans. Tonight's presentation is a collaboration between two phenomenal nonprofits. On the left, we have Community Forklift from Hyattsville, Maryland, and on the right, Uniting Us, Citizens of the World. <laughs> uniting Us is a collective of military artists dedicated to promoting the healing power of art for active duty and veteran families and the communities in which they live. They provide art materials and supplies, mentoring, art exhibitions, the facilitation of artwork purchases, and therapeutic art wellness activities. Community Forklift, on the left, lifts up local communities through reuse. You'll see some of the amazing products they have for sale here later on in the program. Community Forklift turns the construction waste stream into a resource stream in the Washington, D.C. region by keeping reusable items out of the landfill, preserving historic materials, providing free and low-cost building supplies to other nonprofit organizations and households with limited means, and creating local green jobs. This Maryland Commitment to Veterans presentation is coming to you this evening from Community Forklift in Hyattsville, Maryland. Uniting Us artwork is seen in the background. And since this is an interactive program, we'd love for you to join in via the chat functions, and we will be answering your questions later in the program. Now, please join me in welcoming Nancy Meyer, CEO of Community Forklift, and Anne-Marie Halteman, CEO of Uniting Us. Welcome, welcome, <laughs> welcome everybody to Community Forklift. We are so excited about the art show that we've been involved in with this great, fabulous veterans organization, Uniting Us, called Lifting Us. And that was a fabulous collaboration. And tonight is an extension of that collaboration with our incredibly creative artists that are part of this organization, as well as Community Forklift side, we have artists too. Yes. Because in the end, reuse is really about people and creativity and the way that the materials and the people come together to lift up entire communities through enhancing our environments and through the aesthetics that we make the environment a place that we really enjoy being and share our creative energies. And that's really what it's all about. That's what Forklift is really about. That's what the collaboration with Uniting Us is all about. It's people working together creatively and in the community to make everything better for all of us. That's what it's really all about. So we're very excited to be here. Very excited for the different artists that have been part of, the, of our process. And our own Sarah and Scott who are also artists. And even me, who's not participating in the art activity, my background is in art as well. So we're very excited. I think you should participate. Okay, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, um, we hope we can do more of these activities um, going into the future. We're happy to sponsor, and we're happy we, we have supported artists in uniting us, which we will like to continue to do. So thank you, everybody, and welcome. Thank you. And from uniting us, Anne-Marie Halterman. Thank you, Russ. So, Nancy, I have to tell you, so I'm back, my background is Air Force, and Uniting Us is really about inspiring, empowering, and then uniting with communities. And Community Forklift is such an inspiration for our organization and for so many other people in this area. And especially people that are veterans and haven't grown up and lived here their whole life, but now they find themselves in Maryland or in this area. Community Forklift has everything you can imagine. It's like the best toy store ever if you like to be creative, um, make your house look a little bit different than everyone else's. Um, this is the place to come to. And so at Uniting Us, our goal is to do art, therapeutic art type activities as individuals, as families, as a community, and celebrate that wellness and the healing power of the arts. And so thanks to Community Forklift, we had an exceptional exhibit here. People from North Carolina, Connecticut, I mean, all over the place, not just this area, bought artwork and commented on the art, provided feedback to our veterans and our artists. And so ultimately, 
we're here because of you tonight and we're hoping that the people that are watching can join us and come and participate with us the next time we do something so please we love it yeah would you mind introducing your cohort sitting seated next to you please so cynthia scott is she's the one sticking her tongue out at you. Uh, <laughs> she's an artist at Uniting Us and actually a phenomenal um, leader and mentor for other veterans and uh, artists in our organization. And she is the mastermind behind tonight's project. And then we have Kelly McPhee, who's over there. who is right there. And Kelly is, um, he is going to add another touch of brilliance from an artistic standpoint that I do not have. So tonight we have those two artists that you'll be watching and I may be as disruptive as possible. <laughs> and we have some great people from Community Forklift. Troublemaker, we like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well Scott is um, with Community Forklift and has been with us for a little bit over a year and is in charge of our marketing and communications. And he's been a fabulous addition to our team and also just an artist in his own right. And Sarah also is with our um, marketplace team and she's been with us for six months or so, yes. three to six months. Um, and also an artist in her own right. Um, everyone sees Sarah has drawings of every kind of furniture up over her desk um, oh. <laughs> and really appreciates that. But she's with our marketplace team and also an artist, a sculpture and other things in her own right. So we're really thrilled to have them working in a different medium than we typically work in. Right. Well, and that's because of all the great stuff here, right? It's, we can do it's, pretty much it's, anything. It's the stuff, and it's it's the collaboration. Right, and it's Chewy's the connection. Here. Did Chewy, Chewy, oh yeah, yep. and Chewy, Chewy. Hi, Chewy. One of our canine authors. I moved him away from the camera. <laughs> he went toward the human, not toward the machine. He's camera shy. Oh no, he's not. He's actually not. <laughs> he's very sweet, but he is very sweet. Scott, Cynthia, would you mind uh, taking us on a tour so the viewers can see a little bit about what Community Walk has to offer? Absolutely. And I just want to point out that what we're going to try and do today, if you can see behind us the artwork that Anne Marie and Tiffany have collaborated on, this, these wood pieces. And so we've got um, door fronts, or cabinet cabinet doors, doors, cabinet doors, and we've uh, pre-cut a lot of this wood. And, and I've painted some. We've got shiny things. That's what it looked like when we started. Things like this. And we'll show you where we found some of this stuff. And so we, you know, cut it and sanded it, painted some, and we've got tiles and other found objects. Um, most of it from right here from Community Forklift. But ultimately, we're moving in this direction. If you can see some of these artworks. Oh, I'm still attached. Sorry. <laughs> but Kat, you can show that. Um, this kind of artwork is kind of what we're going for. Yeah. And there's more. And these are all collaborative artworks. And so that's the idea here. We've got a, a very large door panel and two smaller ones. And, and it's so good to have another accomplished artist with us who knows how to play with tape. <laughs> and, and just composition and gluing them down and making it look interesting. So I'm going to take them to the. Uh, now we're going to start walking, right? Because there's more things to find in this place. There's a, tre there's a treasure trove. Okay. Ready? Off we go. So for everyone watching at home, Community Forklift is a huge 40,000 square foot self-serve reuse warehouse. They carry all sorts of building materials from every era, and they have modern and vintage tools and hardware and lumber and appliances and architectural salvage. Uh, this is one of Uniting Us's favorite uh, spots to find the found objects for their unique art projects. Uh, you can check out Community Forklift's online store at communityforkliftmarketplace.org. And what you're seeing now is just kind of a smattering of some of the various uh, materials that are available. I mean, uh, don't you think everyone needs one of those sculptures? Only 20 feet. That's all. <laughs> if you have 20 feet. Actually, I'd rather, I saw some stained glass that I'd rather have. Oh, my God, we should go back this there, This place is amazing. you got to check out the vintage hardware. This will be really good for our project. Yeah. <laughs> Especially, because I've been looking for shiny. And... 
Look here. Yes. And then I had found this before too. That I like. That's. I just feel like it would be. Oh, these are the door, vintage door plates that you have the art piece here. Yes. Yeah. We'll have to. We'll have to stop by there and show you some of the things you can do with these. Um, I kind of like go with like more of a sculptural vibe. Like some of the style of these are really really cool. Kind of Art Deco. I love that. Has that got engraving? No, it's just yeah, Art Deco yeah, lines on really it. Deep style. This is cool too. And some of the textures. Look at that. Yeah, and you can like, I mean, some of them are covered in paint. You can leave them that way, or they it boils off Ooh. really easy. You just put it in a crock These pot. are so simple. Yeah, that one's really cool too. Nice too. I think I'll grab that too. Some of these little. Ones. Yeah, the little ones are nice. I mean, because we're like considering those big door panels and the wooden blocks, yeah. and they're different colors, but I mean, I just saw on the other piece that Anne Marie had made, the shiny things attracted me. <laughs> Maybe I'll grab some of these silver ones, too. Be cool. Oh, I like this little switch. Give interactive <laughs> element to your, uh, <laughs> to your artwork. Oh, does it switch? How does it? Yeah, it's just got a little, like a little, Oh, you'd have to put that into the wood, or actually, if you put it beside the wood, then you oh, would have that ability that. to make it move. So you, would be, yeah. you could bring yeah, that cool. and play with it, yeah. That's what we want to do with that. Oh, that's kind of creative. Oh, this is what we're looking for, yeah. Oh, well, we got to get a couple keys. I think, I think that's a great idea. Yeah, the keys. And we do have a couple of the door plates. Oh, this one's like an old-fashioned key thing. That's cool. I think right. I'm sensing a theme here. We're Maybe unlocking <laughs> doors to wellness. Oh, to creativity. Uh, definitely to creativity. <laughs> uh, but speaking of creativity, we should show you what uh, what else you could do with door plates. Uh, one of our community forklift uh, employees, Chase, created this awesome wall. Uh, so just another way to uh, reuse something that in a different way than it was intended, I guess. So, yeah, super cool idea. And to Definitely want to see a close-up of that. Those are all vintage door plates, basically? Yes, exactly. I do feel like you want one of those giant antique skeleton keys hanging down from a red velvet cord or something. Yes. Really right. And it unlocks to a parallel universe. <laughs> or a library, maybe. Like an old book. Like an old book. <laughs> and yeah, look at these. This is terrific. Um, frames. Which is nice for me because, you know, with watercolor, oh, look. Somebody made an interesting art piece with this. Who did that? I love it. I think somebody donated that, as is. Wow. So there's there's some inspiration. But you know what? I like this, just because it's a nice frame, I would take it apart, but I'm thinking that, you know, we were looking for objects that would be interesting in yeah. the composition of that wood. Yes. So I could use this for my own paintings and then use that for the um, for the thing we're working on now. That's a great idea. Two projects in one. Yes. Such value. <laughs> Excellent value. A lot of good frames, though. Yeah. Well, actually, a lot of these were um, uh, donated from a hotel that was renovating. So I'm kind of throwing out their uh, their artwork. We got it. A lot of the same thing, huh? Yeah. But I mean, you can put your own yeah. artwork. Oh, yeah, I would. Them. That's what I would do. Yeah. Go look um, the place where we got all the um, door fronts. Oh, this is so Check cool. this out. Oh my goodness. We get these pretty often. Different uh, old radios from like the 20s and 30s. Really cool style. Um, but this, oh yeah, a gramophone. Isn't that cool? Edison. And sometimes it still works. Well, that's you, um, one of our Uniting Us artists, mm -hmm. who is uh, a ceramicist. Yeah. She found her kiln here. And she's been doing toy making forever from the kiln that she found here. You never know what you're going to find. <laughs> so here we go. So here are the uh, cabinet doors. Um, we also sell like full cabinets, but. Um, yeah, this is what we're going to be using for our both our base and our kind of our combined frame, I guess. It makes a frame. I mean, I was using watercolor where I would um, collage down the the watercolor paper once it's been varnished 
and put it on something like this and you have an automatic frame. That's cool. And then you obviously you take the hardware off, but that's yeah. pretty hardware too. Yeah, but you could add that to our... Uh... <laughs> we could, then we'd have to get some, get to take it out. How much is this? This one is $12. $12 for that panel. That yeah. actually is a nice size too. Yeah. But I think we've got what we need we to start those. with, so we don't yeah. need to bring back any more of this right now. If you're interested in following along, this is where you would get them. <laughs> yeah, and I like it because I've stopped putting my watercolor behind glass and I put I just collage it onto wood panels. That's great. That's cool. Let's see, we're gonna go look at what else? Well, should we head back? How much to, uh oh, let's go look at the houses. Oh, that's great. Well, we can and, then, yeah. <laughs> and then we'll find out um, how much progress we've made. We were doing mosaics today. It's a good spot to get some uh, china to smash up for mosaic pieces. Green man face. Oh my gosh, that's great. Ah. I love this little one with the teeth. That's, <laughs> 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 that's great. <laughs> Maybe too heavy to glue to our. Uh, yeah, some of this. I'm not seeing anything I really want for well, today's project. But I mean, that's a pretty clean course. So it comes out every day. So. But you know, yeah, things like this title. would be, I mean, I think this is adding extra weight because what we've oh, got yeah. with those wood panels is already heavy to begin with. So I don't want to add too much more weight to what's already a heavy art piece. That's a good thought. <laughs> Shower. <laughs> Well, well, let's go back and see how they're doing with the uh, with the project so far. Oh, this is where we got the wood pieces that Anne Marie cut up for us. So you can see we got some of these, even some of these um, turned ones that she cut in slices and sanded for for the use today. So yeah, that's where the wood came from. Anne Marie says that's her favorite section is the wood pile. And lots of doors. Yeah, I see hundreds of. These are, um, what are these stuff? Like old fashioned radiator covers or like vent covers? Look at the stained glass in there. Can you see the stained glass? I know. Oh my God. They're decommissioned from a church. There were some larger ones that I saw before. I really wanted them, but I just didn't have the space. That's always the Just same like thing. I don't have the space for her either. <laughs> All right, time for home base. All right. All right. Back to the this stuff to good use. Just so much to see here. What's a glad it All right. And keys. <laughs> oh, skeleton keys. So good. I have to keep some of the stickers for some of this stuff. Picked up. 
So are you starting to glue, or are you just composing, or what? Composing. I've already broke it and started all over. And you can grab these, obviously, and there's so many more. I have a bit of a blue thing going. Perfect. I love blue. Do you want more blues? Chewy, sit down. Oh, look at the... Oh, it's just a little... Sit down. Good boy. Oh, thank you. There's more blues. Pretty spirals. I spiraled that one. Because <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> oh man. Okay, we'll have to break into those. How many people no. will we get to believe us? That's right. <laughs> You're on his level. You you accept it. <laughs> So you're going to start with framing it with the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm going to really get it. Do you have a theme of going up or down? Or? Nope. So let me just tell you, do you need me to mic again or can you hear me okay? Oh, fine. So, so, yeah, these are these are the blocks that we had pre-cut and we saw some of the places where we saw the, the wood pile back there. This is kind of what it started with and looks now like this. It needed to be sanded. And I was using acrylic paints, and I was trying to stick to just a couple colors to not to control the palette, you know. <laughs> so we've got the blues, and they're going on a blue thing over there, I think. And I used this. Okay, have you ever used um, high flow paint? No. The first like, time I, I love used to, it. Like play with it now. <laughs> <laughs> I used it on sure these, is. and it's really super absorbent. You've I got know. Some, I've got yeah. like the pretty ones. Very nice. And then I also you can mix it if you want to, and it makes it more diluted and more transparent if you mix it with this matte medium, Ooh. gel medium. And gel medium sticks just about as well as that iron weld bond that Anne Marie brought, I think. That's what I've been using for uh, mounting the watercolors on boards, on wood panels. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Nancy, her art's right behind you. Yeah, I saw that. No, no, no. To the right. Oh, that's the watercolor stuff, but this oh, is what we're Oh, okay, to cool. I was just like, yeah. <laughs> the ones she is currently referring to are the ones to your right. <laughs> right, so what, so I, what I was telling you, because you do watercolor also. Yeah. So my friend, that's she does this golden stuff. She's, she's been telling me about the golden watercolor that it's, it's durable, so that when you spray it with the varnish, like if you can use either a gloss or a matte mm -hmm. varnish, and and then I gel, I use the gel medium to basically glue it onto the wood panel. Ooh. That's why these doors are such natural, you know, because they can make their own frame. Yeah, that's, right. I hate framing things, so mm. I feel like this is a really, really yeah. Just start on the frame when you <laughs> begin, and you're all good. <laughs> yeah, that's. So they're so affordable. Yeah. I should have kept the one they accidentally put upstairs. <laughs> I should have kept the one they accidentally put upstairs. <laughs> do you want to leave the <laughs> new yeah, paintbrush? I mean, in color? Um, oh, here. I don't like them to be the same, but there's a lot of those. Choose your weapon. I'm, I'm, these are mm. the less. <laughs> <laughs> these are nice paintbrushes. This is very nice. I like the we have another blank one. No, I'll just use the blue one. I like them here, <laughs> but I spent too much money. <laughs> Come on, do what I want you to do. So, what do you think? It should just be abstract? Completely. Yeah, just add some tile, add some wood. Right. Build up to there. Put them together, then I this is this is fixed. It. No, <laughs> but <laughs> schematically fixed. It's not glued down. Don't lift it up. <laughs> and one of the things that Anne Marie had suggested mm, too yeah. was like using this in a corner, something like that. If I could ask the veterans, what is it you guys get out of making art as opposed to maybe some other activity? Why is the making art important? Um, it, it, it brings me to a place of happiness. It's a somewhere where I have complete control, and um, I, I don't judge myself for what I'm doing. So um, that's why I love abstract art, because it, it seems to fit my, uh, my purpose and my personality. So that's kind of how I feel about it. You like to create. Yes. What sort of feeling does the creativity bring out in you? Mm, like I said, just happiness, truly. I mean, it's just... Sharing it here at CFL was important because it's the first time I'd shared anything with anyone. Normally it's on my walls. So you can come to my gallery, but it's not going to be seen very much, So, which is my house. Why is it so important for your art to be seen? I'm still figuring that one out. I think it's important to share 
so other people have the strength to share. Well, and I think also like it, when I went to art school, that was the big thing was um, everybody was all about critiquing. So it was really about, um, more than the critique, it's about having people really observe and notice um, some things that may have been intentional or not and how people are interpreting what you're, what you're sending out visually, what you're trying to communicate. Maybe you don't have a specific intention or maybe that you start noticing things as you're, as you're creating um, that emerge that maybe someone else sees and that all of a sudden makes sense. I don't know. And I think the it's doing stuff like this, though, where, we're, where we sit together and we each have a different dimension. I tend to like, well, okay, so this one is mine. With the nail in it. With the nail in it. <laughs> it's an old uh, style nail. It's pretty cool. Um, but we each contribute something different to each part that when, when we do collaborative work at Uniting Us. Um, and so I love what it ends up looking like in the end because it's so diverse in nature. But if I understand it correctly, it's a form of communication in the way you're sending a message, and you may not even know what the message itself is. Right. And yeah. you might you figure it out when maybe you figure it out when you're done. Maybe, and maybe you don't. But also another thing is problem solving, and especially in a collaborative, creative process, like you have a general intention. I mean, are we going to fill this whole board up with it every space? Do we have other pieces that? Um, you know, it's, there's a lot of consideration and um, decisions and kind of going with the flow. You get into a flow sometimes, too. I lose time. Yeah. I lose time because I'm actually enjoying myself so much. I just kind of lose myself in my art, and it, um, it's very relaxing. You know, it's funny. As, as children do this in kindergarten, they, they, they work collaboratively. They play, and they, they try things, and I think that uh, adults need to remember that. Because we lose that, that that kind of connection with our inner child that enjoys art. So. Well, and a shout out if April Goodwin Gill and Michael Higgs, Cynthia, you're from Maryland. No, I am. We have a lot of Uniting Us artists that are in Maryland. So shout out to y'all. Hopefully, we get to see you soon, and this COVID can get under control. But you know, ultimately, it comes down to you can sit here as a, at or at home as an individual and do art. And that's very healing and therapeutic and it helps relieve stress you can do it as a family which is actually how the the one on the wall that has the copper and the wood with it that was done by our family um, or do it as a group like we here are here doing tonight with Nancy and Scott and Sarah from community forklift but ultimately the goal is for me is the engagement is what helps me so I'm so appreciative and we're hoping that you join us and help Community Forklift lift you and others up in the community. And I think it should be noted that uh, the artwork that you see in the background, all of the artwork, is from Uniting Us Artists uh, all around the country. Uh, folks from CFL, let me ask you this. Do you have a lot of artists coming here looking for objects and unique items that they can Oh, see? definitely. Uh, we had one time where we were just about to close and I was out at the gate and we had a customer who had to come in and get this one specifically colored towel. She's like, please, I just need five seconds. And she ran in, got it, and left. And she, that was her goal for that day, was getting this one piece of artwork, or pe one piece she needed for an artwork. Yeah. And use that too. We also have a lot of artists who work for Community Forklift, so it's a, we, we can be very helpful for customers that like that. Like uh, Andrew, our tech and lighting guy, he's a ceramicist. And then Scott's graphic design. I'm sculpture. And Nancy is also sculpture, I believe. Sculpture, painting, drawing. Yeah, it's, it's all around. It's all around. It helps to have an aesthetic sense if you work here. Yes. <laughs> it's also with merchandising. Uh, we call it merchandising. Uh, it's when we arrange things in the store to like for like certain Show themes, off. like when we did like Thanksgiving or like we'll set up like a dining table with all this fun stuff around it. And as artists yourself, do some things come in and you say, oh boy, I want this one. Uh, yes. That is a daily every time, Every time stained glass comes in, it's a struggle. Oh my God, did you see the church ones that were here? Like yes. Oh, if only I had a place to put those. <laughs> <laughs> what sort of interesting things have you guys taken for yourself, or purchased for yourself, I should say, back here? Yes. 
I I just have a love of furniture. Whenever I go through that furniture aisle, I have to keep in mind my partner has a rule for me. It's one thing in, one thing out. So I think, can I get rid of something at home? No. So that's it. That's pretty much it. <laughs> I uh, take a lot of broken light fixtures, like the things that are unusable as light fixtures, and I take apart the uh, pieces and use them to make something else. I haven't actually gotten to make anything else yet due to not having a workshop, but I've got a bunch of pieces lined up. I guess I should also say that CFL serves a very valuable purpose for people uh, who might be eliminating income oh, wow. or renovating their homes. Yes. Yeah, and I mean, uh, on our uh, social media accounts, we have a lot. Of, we have a lot of great ideas for projects. People will send in some ideas for things that they've done, and uh, people's creativity just is astounding. I mean, things that they can use a door for that you never even think people using it for tables, for headboards, and yeah, just to see the kind of things that people like to do with it. I would assume there's probably a lot of interest in the old stuff that you. Yes. Yeah, the, uh, you'll see those around the store with blue stickers on them. Those are the vintage items, and they're very popular. Because there's a lot of people who come in who know how that can look at it and tell, hey, it's made of this wood, it's this old, and they they look at all the uh, hardware on it, and the, that's like a big standpoint. Like we have a vintage hardware section that people are super interested in. Where do you get the donations from? Everyone? <laughs> you, if you and have a donation, you can bring it in. Uh, large, we sometimes go pick up larger donations, and a lot of them are contractors who bring stuff in, or people with like overflow. Like, uh, I believe TW Perry was the one. Overflow. Yeah, TW Perry had a lot yeah. of. Yeah, uh, you, know, you know the bigger ones better than I do, despite yeah, the fact that I work with Martina. Um. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, there's companies that um, design build companies. They're taking out kitchens, for example, and they'll take out the old kitchen. We'll come pick it up, and the homeowner gets a tax, can get a tax credit for the deduction, and they can take the deduction. It's fabulous. Stuff comes here, goes back into the community. Uh, we work with companies that have um, stock that's basically older stock. They want to get rid of it. They're cleaning out a warehouse, that kind of thing. So there's a lot of sourcing from both individuals and partners and you know, construction companies and distributors and lumber yards and so forth that really, really help support us. So CFL has been, this is its 15th anniversary year. Have you noticed a difference in the sort of stuff that was donated 15 years ago or even five years ago? Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I actually think we're getting a lot higher quality material. And, um, I'm not sure what's going on. I think that's Anne Marie. She likes to break it. Okay. <laughs> 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 that's Anne Marie soliciting a donation right now. Hey, check this out. Yeah. Okay. Well, I find that interesting. Yeah. 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 Was that you making all that noise? I might have had a hand. <laughs> oh, now the rocks. Rocks are much better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just showing sure that hammer. if you're looking for a hammer, you'll find one here. Yeah, yeah. true. Or nails, or wood. Did I talk about the wood section yet? We saw yeah, some of it, but actually, could you take us on a little tour right now of the vintage uh, tools? Yeah, let's go take a look at that. Expert? Yeah, well, I don't know that I'm an expert, but I do love this section. So in this back area is all the tools, and they call it hardware. And you can find pretty much anything that you're looking for. So, if you're looking for an old school edger, you're gonna find one. So you can edge your sidewalk or your driveway or whatever, you know, back to the old school way of doing things. If you need a metal cabinet with a power strip on it, oh, and oh, Russ. This is right from Christmas story, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. This is the, you might need that. This is the actual shovel that Ralphie used in Christmas Story. People don't know and that. And there's only one here. There's only one here, and it has a price of $5 on it. So such a deal, as we like to say, from New York. That's right. And so in addition to the shovels and the things like that, if you're looking for a specific kind of saw, and or even um, here 
is a hacksaw that has, you know, the old wood handle. Mm -hmm. And it's um, $6, I guess, this one is. But if you root around, you can find pretty much anything that you're looking for. I make these these skulls that have, like, hearts of wrenches in them. Mm -hmm. And at 25 cents a piece, 50 cents a piece, that doesn't cost you very much, and you can make some cool stuff. I would assume there's some hard to find stuff here too, things that haven't been, well, not that a hammer is hard to find, but this certainly is a vintage one. It is, and uh, here, <laughs> You know, you kind of have to look in this section because there's so much different stuff, but this is one of the old um, Phillips screwdrivers that have the wood handle, mm -hmm. and you can see, you know, how the years of use on it, but it's still in perfect order. And so, you have that type of stuff, they also have... You know, all the hand tools, here's a router, uh, DeWalt drill, and you'll see they have um, the date that this equipment was tested on so that they certified that it was tested. Uh, item tested by community forklift staff on the 29th of December, and so they'll guarantee that this works. Um, and so and if, it, if you have a problem with it, you can show it to them and they will give you a refund. Um, but essentially, you're looking at, here's a handheld drill, right? Look at, that's a drill press attachment. Wow. So you don't need a drill press, too. So, again, a lot of things you're not going to find other places. Now, when we were here a couple weeks ago, there were actually old tables. I think you may have purchased one that had a uh, vice. Oh, the vice built. on top of yes. it. I wonder if those are still there. Uh, they are. They did not appear to be. Oh, I bet they went fast. $125 for a metal counter for like welding but any type of shop work and a huge vice that had to have been I'd say in general 80 to 100 years old it's phenomenal and they were $125 and they have this huge paint section and you can see the Amazon paint and there are different spots in the store where you'll actually get an opportunity to see the paint on the walls and then they have it labeled as such all right, so you're somebody who loves to tinker. You're a little bit of a pack rat. What? Um, we, what? Have, we have heard. Yes, um, so okay. So what is it you get out of the store? Oh, well, we'd have to go to the wood section. I mean, I do buy stuff in the hardware section a lot. Um, and it, everything from nuts and bolts and screws to wrenches and uh, ev everything in the section. But really, my love in this store is the wood. So have you gone to the live cut wood we will be heading back there in just a couple minutes why don't we go back and see what they're yeah, doing let's here see what for they're a minute doing. and then i think we'll take off and show some of the other I, I do like the color, like, to, and to make these sort of linked up. These look like pickles for a sandwich. Pickles for a sandwich. I think don't make any sense mm -hmm. at all. Either. Oh my gosh! Even. They're all, they're zooming. <laughs> oh, they're painting. Yeah, they have the sun. Like, Ours is like a thirty or the size, so it's really. Yeah. I do. <laughs> oh, I do yeah. too. I want that too. But on the other hand, well, not a material. Is this what we're doing? This way? If only there was a warehouse full of them. There you go. That's my impermanent sculpture. I think it's a little bit dinner, so we can go on another tour if anybody wants to leave the tour. You can show the giant stained glass pieces. Oh, those are Since we were talking about them, they're so beautiful. Have you guys priced them yet? Yeah. So are you using pickles right out of the yeah. tube? Or yeah. Are that, you mixing it? Oh, good. You can do any, either way. <laughs> no, either way. I'm just curious. Yeah, well, way too big. Yeah. Yeah. Just I love the, like, texture it's making, so I'm having fun. That's cool. Although oh, it is distracting that. us from uh, actually gluing down our pieces, but we'll get to that. Okay. <laughs> There's another one here. Oh, she's using them orange. Oh, I like oh. the blue colors there. Ashley Palmer says, love the blues. Yay! Yay. What do you say? <laughs> I love the blues. I love the Yay. blues. I do too. And folks, please, if you have questions or comments, please use the chat functions. We will be getting to them actually in a minute or two. Here's more from And when you get the creepy of the fly and you get done, you fill in the area, you can do the frame. Oh, yeah. Okay. You can paint the frame, you mean? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Look at the airplane. It might be good to focus on one that we can see one finisher, because this is getting to be easy. I like the blue vest a lot, too. Well, it's really interesting how they've all kind of gone in different directions uh -huh. with the colors. And, uh, well, and here we have a guest of color. And Nancy got what was, what was left. I know, exactly. <laughs> I know. You know you Sorry, can, Nancy. You I hope you like orange. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. I like the natural look, too. Because it has rust. Well, I feel like if they're, when it's natural, you, you tend to like t co concentrate more on the shape than the color, right? Like the, which is kind of cool. like you're inventing your own nature. And this is a blue like a that I put nature. some of that um, nickel, what is this, quincidrone nickel azo gold. And I had mixed That's it. That's a color name. Yeah, <laughs> great color name. It looks Jeez. green to me. <laughs> it does look green. Don't ask me to repeat that. <laughs> All right, should we go on another tour? Who yeah. wants to lead the tour? Yeah, do it. I will, I will go. Here's the water. Scott looks like he's ready to do it. <laughs> Scott's our tour man. All right, we're going to go on a tour. Three hour tour. I'll go with you, yeah. <laughs> not everyone will get that. Don't worry, we will not be gone for three hours. Okay, so more treasures to find. Yeah. Well, and if anyone sees something yeah. that we could add when you're doing the tour, and if they put it in the chat, yeah, please do. Let's monitor that and then oh, yeah. try to add it to the art. That's Ooh, a good that's point. A sure. Idea. Yeah. Yes, we can take your suggestion. Thank you. Yes, if you see something that Pat's looking at, tell us if you think it'll work with the piece we're working on. Which way? We have to be. I haven't been into uh, hardware yet. No. Maybe we can uh, see and some I, things in that's here. That's where we can fight shiny blue, shiny things too. <laughs> I should have said that for you. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, this one looks interesting. Like it can go from one piece to another. Oh yeah. Kind of like the um, the copper bits. Yeah, on, like those uh, copper um, elbows that she had yeah. under the um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Her. Speaking of elbows, these are kind of like. Yes. I love those. Those are perfect and better than this because this I I don't know what you do with this oh, part. Oh, with that thing. Yes, oh, I'll okay. put that back. Here, well, I'll, I'll grab all the ones I can find, and okay. you, you can share them. Good. I'll keep Listen. looking. Into... So Joy uh, just said that I can't wait to make one of these. Joy, mm -hmm. if you have any suggestions, what you'd like them to uh, to grab out of the, one of the bins here, please let us know. Do you have to like one of the knobs? All kinds of knobs. Ooh, oh, that's kind of interesting. Look at that. Oh, I love that. I'm keeping that one. Yes. That's a good. And then there's like ceramic ones. But again, this is, oh, oh, that's not a problem. You just unscrew these. Unscrew so they, that. yeah. Excellent. So you just have to take those out if you don't want them. But that does make a decent little knob look. And I think it should be said for those of us who have old houses and you're always trying to find knobs that fit or are of yes. a particular period, it's very hard to find. I'm um, going to scoosh by you. Here. Yeah, and we actually, we also have on our, um, on our eBay site, you can search. Uh, we have knobs and hardware listed. So uh, it's very helpful for, like you said, old, old house owners. It's just a great place to browse. It's kind of a used bookstore type of way. <laughs> yeah. Thing, yeah. It's all the way to think of it. Oh, it's like a door hinge? Yeah, that's like a heavy yes. duty. But it's got these moving parts. It's kind of interesting. I don't know. Oh, there's a lot of hinges over here. Yeah. Well, like you said, I mean, this, these are the hinges that are in my house. Oh, and these are nice flat ones. That's like for a door also, I guess. Oh, yeah, like the, the, the lock plate. Yeah, but I, I kind of want more of these round things. I'm kind of looking for round things. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. 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 Shiny! Oh, these are like the things that we've already got. Yeah. Well, Only these are more copper colored. What else have they got in here? Kind of all the same thing. What is this? Oh, a doorstop. Door I think it's those are, door the, those are the doorstops. Oh yeah, we've got a lot of cool doorknobs. Grab a doorknob right here. Oh, I think you wanted one of these. These ones. One, one of these. Cool. Shiny, shiny door ones. Knob, yeah. Shiny doorknobs. Yeah, all just right. Shiny for you. Oh, you may do this. One with like a flat. I wonder how we could take it apart and use some of the innards. Maybe very sculptural. You know, I feel like that would be good for, uh, like, if we, I could get a screwdriver, we could screw it on there. I don't know if glue, hmm. glue will hold that. We can give it a shot. Thank you. We'll see what we can do with it. Good idea. 
This is a really great section to just come and like sift oh, around. Oh, okay, here we go. Here's little glass um, plates, like little round glass. That would be good for what we're doing. Little, that's good. And there's a lot of them. So I'm gonna get. And then here's. Well, these are tacks, little brass brass tacks. <laughs> it's like being a kid in a candy store. Is what you're doing. <laughs> it is. I think I need these. <laughs> We should be moving along. Where do you want to go next? Uh, should we go to uh, the tile section? Maybe? Oh, yes, the tiles are great. The tile section is very good. Do you guys um, have grout and things like that available? Is it good? Is it good? You did see these before? Because I love these. These are antique. Uh, registers for grades. Yeah. For the, we could use that in my old house. I don't know. We have a, an antique stand in the house. Oh, that's great. And look at all these fireplace mantles here. Not for our art project today, but really, some of them with the carving and everything. They are. It's as if they come in there like you know, seven, eight feet tall. Wow, the house that looks like. This is actually one of my favorite tiles we have right now. It's uh, put oh. together. It's like this kind of like, reminds me of like a pizza slice. But you yeah. can do it in so many different ways. Uh, and actually the manufacturer has a really great website where they show you all the different patterns you can do. So I thought these were a lot of fun. Interesting. All gray. But you yeah. can paint. Oh, this is what. Yeah, when you put oh, it together, you, you can put make a circle. With the white grout or whatever. I see. Super creative. Yeah, but this, yeah, do you like uh, that idea, Joy? Um, I'll try and get them to go back to those numbers and pick one out for them. What was that? Uh, Joy uh, said, I, I took a video of some of the numbers that you have, and oh, she, uh, oh, they okay. said to use one of those denoting the number of Ooh, artists working on the pretty. piece. Oh, I love marble. That. Yeah. Look at these marble tiles. That piece of marble is gorgeous. Yeah, that's great. That's $3 for that. I guess that... I mean, I have no idea pricing tile, but I know that you guys, this is, this is so much better than yes. Lowe's. Yes. I mean, and plus the, 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 the collection of tiles is so much better, too. Yeah, you really get the different Look at this. Check out these over here, Pat. This has got this weird texture. These, these. Yeah, there are actually several different patterns of that one. Oh, actually, they might have gotten bought. And then this is gorgeous here, too. And the white ones over there. And some of these small packs up here um, are really good for coaster projects. Coaster projects. Uh, coasters. Like you can paint them or like wallpaper them. They're really great gifts. For you. Like drink, drink box. Yeah. Coasters. Oh, coasters. Yeah. I see what you mean. Yeah. Sorry, my master's a little well, what Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, so what would you paint on that kind of tile, do you think? What kind of paint? Like this? I've seen where somebody just took a white tile and dipped it in gold Ooh. and then dried it. And it, it was so simple and, and modern. It was beautiful. And just the tile in, Like in, gold paint, yeah, maybe? Yeah, yeah. I guess you could use acrylic paint, no problem. If you want. Yeah. Well, well, I actually, like we can go to our paint section, too. Yeah. Look at the textures on these. I mean, you could just use these as coasters and then natural. You don't have to paint them at all. <laughs> Look at all that texture and color. Uh, oh. Yes. <gasps> and they all have kind of different crackle finishes and stuff too. That is beautiful. Oh man, now these, I wouldn't mind, but we want to find these loose. I know, that's the thing. Yeah, well, I don't need that many, task, yeah. Right? yeah. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Take the camera away, they'll be loose in a minute. <laughs> don't look. Oh. Some of these, yeah, look at this. It's got the one edge, so this is meant to be on the edge, I guess. Maybe a backsplash. A backsplash or something like that. I like all the tile work. 
And here's some more of the mosaic style. Not crazy about the colors, but they're nice and neutral. You know, they'd be going like earth kind of tones. And some plain old white. Oh, there's some more of those. Um, I don't know what you call that shape, but I love all the different finishes on, on those kind of gray green tone tiles with the shiny finish. Oh, these. these are nice too. Yeah. Ooh, that's a loose one. That's a Lucy. Yeah. Can we take that back? Yeah, yes. Let's do it. Let's take this one back. I love, back. Oh, I love these. We'll see what they're up to. Yeah, this will be good for our project because it'll move things in different directions. With the hexagon, you can take different directions. Oh, we're going to go All back right. this way. This is a good find. Yeah, I think that, that'll work really well. Yeah. Do you find a lot of people looking for mid-century modern type stuff or things to go? Yes. That's the hot era now? Yeah, it's funny. You can really judge what's been, which is most popular, by what sells like that. Uh -huh. <laughs> and mid-century modern, as soon as we get mid-century modern furniture in, uh, it's not even a day before it leaves the warehouse again. Uh, it's not hard to see why. It's really so beautiful. The lines are great. So, yeah, that's really popular. People love stained glass. So, uh, oh yeah, I think we already showed these, but yeah, we used to have three, and now we've, we're down to two. But um, really, really beautiful pieces. And these were sourced straight from our church in Baltimore, right? Uh, well, these, yeah, I think these were from Baltimore. The ones we had before were definitely uh, out of Baltimore. It was a really interesting story. Uh, a property owner bought some land that had a, uh, uh, a shipping container on it, and when he opened it up, it was just full of old stained glass. And they didn't want it, so they, they donated it here. Oh, these so. are very popular to do art projects with. These kind of, what are these um, box, they're, boxes? They're, those are the printers that Frank has. They used, what printers used to put the little uh, type in. Type type, yeah. yeah, the typefaces. Yes, the typefaces. Wow, so that must be pretty antique then. Yeah. Some in, those are interesting pieces. It's a shame that it's I kind of think I might need one of these. Use those, so. <laughs> yeah, you go back that far. Yes. I guess I'm mid century I'm modern as well. I'm grabbing one of these because I might just have to have this for myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go grab a number. Yeah, I'll follow you real quick just to make sure. Back to the numbers. Ooh, we, oh, man. I like this six. There's so many different fonts of uh, <laughs> addresses. I think I'm just gonna go with this. The six it has a nice dash quality mm. to it. <laughs> or a nine, depending. <laughs> yeah, it could be either. How many artists are there working on these? Oh, that's a <laughs> Nine, ten. Well, mm? we're close. Close. <laughs> I don't know if there's a one and a zero. Now it feels like the bottom of a river, you know? Or it's got the stones and maybe something oh, fell in the bottom nice. of a river. We need to figure out a way to put that apart. I like it. That's it. That's right oh, yes. <laughs> oh, did Pat see that? I thought that would look really good with our blue. Look. Yes. Wow. Isn't that pretty? Oh, yeah. A lot of these pieces are glued down now. Oh, excellent. Wow, you've been busy. And has, and this, yeah. <laughs> We were talking about these. Oh, they're good. Yeah, look at these guys. I thought these were really fun next to. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Did you want some of these? Yes, I want some too. We could put like right here. We'll put them over here. Oh, I love. It's like a little ocean going down. Right. Oh, I like that idea. Like that. Did you ever play that game? Uh, what was it? Waterworks. You think it's a? That might be a little too old for you. Never mind. Forget I said that. Scott, how old are you? <laughs> so you can use this to glue things with also. But okay. Are you and running these? out of that glue? Huh? Are you not running out of that glue, are you? The one in your, oh, in your no, hand. no, no. This one's fine. Okay. Yeah. But just, this, this works pretty well, too. I know okay, cool. You, this is the kind of glue that Anne-Marie and Tiffany used on these pieces that you see behind oh, us. Nice yes, I love so this So I know glue. that works. Oh, yes, that that product be, placement. Oh. <laughs> I believe so. Wow. Oh. It's glued on. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, a lot of these are already like hard in place. This is the first one I glued. Oh, yeah. Let me ask you this as a non-artist. Why 
this okay. array? Why did you Actually, choose which piece where? Okay, so I'm basically doing kind of like a train of thought, just kind of putting things on. We started with this piece up here back when Miriam was back here, and we were just like, oh, this one would be cool with the key on top of it up in a corner. And so, was, and then me and Scott were like, oh, why don't we make like a diagonal thing of all the funky little pieces and then have the blocks around it? And that is where we are now. And we're painting pieces. We added, well, we're gonna add that piece. Uh, this is the crackle uh, acrylic right here that I made into like little mounds, kind of looks like an ocean-y kind of. So the bottom yeah. line is though, you did that because you thought it looked cool. There yes. There wasn't any real rhyme or reason to open it and be like, yes. hey, it'd be fun if we did this. Yeah, let's, no. Let's try this. No, I always do art with the thought of if you're not having fun, you're not doing it right. Agree. Yeah, yeah especially for sculptures. All right, and, and, and uh, Kelly had mentioned before that kind of brings out the child in him in a way, and it does need to do that. That's what it seems like you're saying, too. Yeah, it's just have fun. have fun. Now, if I'm a guy or a woman, somebody sitting at home watching this and saying, ah, this isn't for me, what would you say to him? Uh, There's thousands of ways, ways to do it that you could do it on your own. Like, no, but I mean the expressing myself like, through this way, that doesn't seem like something I'd like to do. So this is yeah, a... I would say, I would say just give it a shot, you know, like, what, these were like 50 cents, you know, get a, get a bunch of them and, you know, try it out, you might surprise yourself, so, that's, yeah, that's how I would approach that. Yes. <laughs> you think sometimes people are too critical of themselves, though, it's like, oh, yes. yeah, that's, yes. I don't like that. Yes, it. they, yes. there are a lot of, I've seen a lot of artists, they make small mistakes and just give up completely and it's just like a lot of it's are a lot of it is just small things that you could fix easily or if you just like talk to, walk away talk to someone else and then come back and then you'll see oh wait i can do this instead or something like that i found that sometimes the, the think or mistakes are actually they actually they're, end they're up the cool so things. cool yeah right yeah, you just, if you're getting really frustrated, you're probably just, you've been working too long. Right, right. Or you're stuck and you need to, like, either walk away. I usually go and pet my dog for a while. And it's also smart to remember that this is all incredibly subjective, right? That's yeah, totally, totally. In the end, the only person you need to, like, worry about is yourself. Like, what other people think of it is not your problem. Kelly, what were some of the choices you made here and why did you make them? Oh, um, well, I like the gears. They look like cogs. Um, you need a centerpiece. This is like antique, so it has like energy. You know, it has to have some sort of energy. Also, the three points have something to do with it. But um, there's symmetry, so Cynthia thought these would look beautiful there, which I like it. It kind of brings in the focus into the center. Um, everything else, I like the shiny stones. They kind of, because you have the matte finish of everything else, natural. So it kind of feels like it's the bottom of a river, the bottom of a stream, actually. You mentioned the symmetry. Is that important? Is that an artist trick, or is that? Um, if you look in, in nature, um, symmetry is everywhere. Mm -hmm. So we're, as artists, I think we're trying to mimic nature. Um, nature is abstract, you know, and so what we're trying to do is make it happen here. You're not trying to blast the hell out of nature or out of symmetry. You're not trying to go against the grain. No, not necessarily. It actually feels weird. It's like putting your underwear on backwards. It's just like it doesn't feel right. So. <laughs> But from what I've heard, that does cause snow to happen. So it could be. It, you know, so I look for symmetry. Um, whenever I see something out in public or whatever, I, I look for the symmetry. And um, in my art, I always find the symmetry, even though it's not purposeful. So I do like making these like like gears. Yeah, fit together. Um, I'm not sure. I, do we want to put any kind of varnish on them? Or I, I, you like the natural color? I guess I, I don't kinda, know. I kind of do. The, the way that I would have done this is like I was uh -huh. saying, I would have put a bed of glue down. Like after I did this, okay. I would put a bed of glue down and then reconstruct it. Well, that's the idea. I think what we'll For do is sure. we'll take a fi picture, but then we have to make a decision about whether we want to treat these wood pieces any further. If, we, if I had time, I would actually stain these different colors. That's what I think we should do. And make it amazing out. Yeah. No, sure. because we still have shows coming up, Kelly. And at the airport, we've got we've got some artworks already up at Dulles Airport, but something like this, when we you know once we've got to take a picture and make get this composition kind of down, sure. and then go back and restain and stain these in different shades of the same 
no. family of color, some natural. So someone had a cool uh, suggestion that uh, you could fill it with epoxy and make it into sort of like a coffee table or something. Oh, yeah. Oh. Ooh, yeah. I, like I love that, that idea. Yeah. I've always wanted to make a, a, a table like this. I would probably, if I did that, replace these these larger pieces for sure. Put a border around sure. it. Make, it, form make like it, a it resin. stick up a little bit from the... Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, but that's a great idea. Um, what you could do is put a little border on it and then fill it with the resin on the top. I still haven't messed with resins, but I definitely want to try them. So these pieces lend themselves, the, the lower pieces, you know, inside of here would lend themselves very well. Anne Marie works with resin a lot, doesn't she? Yes, awesome. she does. She does. She does wood turning. She pours resin mixed with wood and other natural objects like acorns. And then she'll put it on a lathe once it hardens, and she turns it all together. <laughs> it's amazing pieces. I don't think she has any here to show you today. Well, but what I'm hearing from all of you is there is no right or wrong. Just kind of jump in and do, yep. do it, and do. whatever you Just think. Do. And at the yeah. end, you'll probably be pretty happy with it. Oh yeah. I find myself pretty stressed out. By the end of it, I'm not. Um, oh really? Oh yeah. Being yeah. done with it's the best. <laughs> and if you don't like your art, it's okay. It's that's, okay. That's, that's part yeah. of it. If I don't like it, I put it to the side, and then all of a sudden, six months later, I love it again, and I'm doing different things with it. So. Well, and they say you have to get some of the ugly out, art out first for the good stuff to come, too, the prettier yeah. stuff. Yeah. I mean, you just have to do. There's also learning new things. Like, if you just started woodworking, it's not going to look, like, perfect every time. Right. Exactly. You're going to mess up your joints at least once. I did. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, broken box joints are the worst. <laughs> well, just to see when it's done, you know, if you feel like it's yeah. not right, just come back What's to it in a couple years and give it a shot. Or something like yeah, that. happy little, are, happy yeah. accidents. Yeah. Yeah. Happy accidents. Yes. yes. Well, that happens in television. I knew he'd That's come up this tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I really like this concept, this though. Oh, yes. Kind of and then we'll have everyone questioning, what does the six the mean? Actually, the color. <laughs> and then we just say, well, everybody watching at home, if you have any comments or suggestions, please get them to us now, because we're heading into the home stretch here. Oh, no. Yeah, any uh, questions or anything? Um, so what I'm saying is that you know, if you want to take take these wood pieces back and do the staining, then we can get together again yeah, of course. to follow up and do the gluing and the final composition. Well, maybe on our next live stream we'll have have a maybe more of a, a finished product. That would be cool. So, if we do sure. another live stream to show it. Looks like. But the point is that it's big enough because we have several art shows coming up with Uniting Us. So I we will probably need a drill and some screws for ours. Do larger scale pieces for places like the airport, public spaces, right. for art exhibition with you. We talked to Anne Marie as well. We're going to do some other big pieces as well on canvas too. And I think that Those needs to be said to here carry. too. Uh, yeah. Uniting Us has a number of exhibitions coming up at Walter Reed, at National Airport, at Dulles okay. Airport at the uh, women's uh, military the women's, we're talking to them yeah so the pieces you're seeing made here right now may wind up or may be seen at those shows so it, this is yeah. not just busy work and uh <laughs> what does it feel like for you guys to know that thousands of people are looking to today will see your artwork mm, i don't like to think about it first. you don't like to think about that no well, you're you're more shy about letting your pieces go. I noticed that it's, you're, I it's feel an, like, like it's children. an adoption. It's not a sale. So gotcha, if you yeah. take my art, you're adopting something. It's yeah. it's important. It's been uh, nurtured at my uh, at my place, and so it's it's important that I know it's going to be taken care of. So, so someone did want to see the wood section. Um, I don't know if Anne Marie wants to take us on. Anne Marie, that really quick. We have a request from somebody to see the wood section. Thank you for the comment about the resin. I think that's a great idea. I think yeah, that's I think an so interesting too. idea. That would be an interesting, kind of a more interesting way to glue it down. So also, yeah. and, um, something that we talked about, I think, is a cool is to finish it up and then show it next time with the yeah, next live stream. So definitely. if anyone's interested in seeing it uh, completed, then tune in next time, you know. Uh, for sure. So Anne Marie is willing to take you to the wood pile, her favorite section. Yes, yes, this is my favorite section. And actually, there are many wood piles. So keep that in mind, because if you're looking for something refined that's already plain and that's live edge, right when you come in the entrance, this is the entrance here on, on my right, they have any kind of wood you can pretty much think of, and it's already plain, so it's smooth. Some of it's live edge, some of it's not. And so for this piece of wood right here, which it looks like it's, I think that's walnut, 
looks like it's about an inch and a half thick for $99. So if you want to make a desk or a table, this is a perfect piece to be able to do that with. They also have legs for different tables and desks and things like that. So you can find those here as well. Or check out this piece right here. This is beautiful. Here, let me do this. This is worth, uh, worth the effort. Mm. But you can see the grain on the wood. And like I said, it's already plain, so a little bit of sanding. If you want to do epoxy pour and do a river table or something like that, um, you can find all different types of pieces. So here's a little piece of sycamore. I just bought something like this last week. And then I'm using it with walnut, and I'm layering it and making a segmented bowl that I can turn on my leg, blade. Ooh. But this piece is $36. If I was to buy a sycamore bowl, bowl blank, that would cost me about 30 bucks. So I can get this whole piece and probably make four or five bowls out of it and pay 36. And so if you just look down, you'll see they have taller stuff. It looks like some of it's like 20 foot, um, smaller pieces that are a couple of feet. This piece right here, as you can see, is about three and a half, four inches thick. So, you know, some great opportunities if you want to already have the wood processed, at least some for you. And then, if you walk a little bit further, what you're going to find is you're going to see, can you see the shelves down there? So, at the end of the uh, hall here, which is the far side of the building, there's wood planks and old beams, mostly restored uh, from, reclaimed from barns and old warehouses and things along those lines in the DC area. And so here's a, a five by three, or probably a six by four beam that came out of an old building. And I can't see the price on it, but they're usually less than what you'd buy uh, a basic beam at Home Depot for, plus it has the antique look, so you can make a mantle out of that, or you can use it as exposed beam in your, in your house. And so this is a great section if you're looking for something like that with structural wood. And then back in the far corner, oh, then they have brackets for making um, decks and building buildings, and they're so cheap compared to what you're gonna pay at like Home Depot. Particle board, pressed wood. Um, again, if you're looking for art, if you're looking to make a shed in your backyard, they have everything you need. Here's some more of those beams. And you can see the sheet goods on top and what their prices are. And so compare that to what, it's crazy if you compare that to what you're gonna pay at Lowe's or Home Depot. And if you're looking for just more uh, wood that has, you know, like this one, for example, this is actually a support, a structural support. I don't know, I've, you, you have to check to see the moisture content to whether or not it has the strength that it originally did. But if you have a contractor that's gonna do some building for you, they would probably know how to figure that out for you. And then there's odds and ends. So, you know, this is part of a door frame, banisters. Here's a trim piece right here. So if you want to do a project that's small, you probably can find enough pieces to do it. If you want to do a large project and have 50 pieces of the same rail or trim, you might not find it. But if you look, <laughs> they have pretty much anything you could be looking for. And then this whole far wall has different types of wood in it. Well, I mean, you're noticing the beautiful radiators up here. They're like oh, on over there. aren't they cool? Yes. Did you talk about the kitchen cabinets? No, they didn't get to that too much because it's too far away. Okay, so, you know, things like these old radiators are pretty cool. And if you are missing one in your house, almost impossible to find one if you don't right. want to. Right. Like so, 
This one right here is $112. Just to give you an idea on the cost. They have carpet padding, fireplaces. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. Totally good. You're killing it. Insulation for, you know, it, whether it is blown insulation for the attic. Um, I also actually found insulation for for my car that I'm restoring, which that's a whole nother story. <laughs> and in this section back here is the lighting, which is incredible, especially if you're a stained glass person or, oh, mantles, aren't these beautiful? I get a little bit distracted. <laughs> um, yeah, so they have even bigger ones than that white one that you see there on the back. And they're kind of placed throughout the store. So you just kind of have to keep your eyes open. So this is all electronic, or I'm sorry, lighting type stuff that's back here. And you can see that they process it when the donations come in. Hi, sir, how are you doing? What keeps you the busiest? Um, no specific light or fan, but all of it combined. It's a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. Yep. People can pretty much find anything here from a lighting standpoint. Oh, yeah. And then some. Yes. Awesome. Yep. 1930s fixtures right here. Um, oh, yeah. Beautiful. We have a 1910 or so fixture next to it. 1960s fixtures. <laughs> a little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. Thank uh, you, sir, for what you do. Absolutely. Thank you. hardwood flooring section and so everything from new this has never been used it looks like it's oak to no kidding like longer pieces that are different types that you know maybe wouldn't be used for flooring anymore but if you have it actually an old house you might be able to find something that would match your floor if you have a problem and they have them bound together so you can actually get a pack of them. I actually use these and I put them together to make frames for art. So there's a million different uses for them. Yes. All right, we probably ought to be heading back and see where they are. Yes. And, and while we're doing that, Pat, if you can just look this way, you can see the kitchen cabinets. I mean, new cabinets, old cabinets, painted, natural wood cabinets, all wood that haven't been painted or stained. And you know, this actually these sell pretty fast. But really inexpensive solutions and and great options. What did you say the square foot was in here? Forty thousand square feet. 40,000 square feet is absurdly large, but, you know, I think there's not enough space because you know, I, yeah. I love everything. And this is just even a great way to spend an hour or two, especially on a rainy weekend afternoon, because even if you don't buy anything, even if you don't need anything, right? some of it is kind of a walk back, a nostalgia of either what you remember or what you remember of your parents, or one of those types of Or things. showing your kids what it is. So get kids. this, Russ. The other day, we were with our eight-year-olds, and we saw an old phone, um, phone booth. Mm -hmm. And we asked the kids, what is this machine? They didn't know. You know what a phone booth was. Yeah. A pay phone. They didn't know what a pay phone was. I know. It was like, oh my gosh. It made me feel really old. And it's not here anymore, so somebody found value in it. <laughs> exactly. It's a conversation piece in somebody's life sure. somewhere. For sure, for sure. So it can be educational as well. And I, I actually really enjoy the chair tree that they have up here. Cherry tree. Yeah. I call it the cherry tree. But there's a couple of chairs up there that look really cool, so I, I wonder if they'd actually climb up there and take it down. <laughs> There's that artwork again, too. Made all from uh, floor handles. 
old doors. The lock. So a big call out to Maryland commitment to veterans for caring and trying to do the right thing and introduce people to resources. We're happy to answer any questions. And I know they're online monitoring the chat as well. So thank you so much for this opportunity and come join us and Community Forklift. Great. And we're back over here. Someone had an interesting point. Um, Artists, we have a artist. We have a viewer question. Or uh, so, I mean, I just wanted to sort of talk about. A veteran would love that. My husband and I are both disabled veterans out here in Hagerstown. We'd love something like this. Um, so, yeah, I mean, anyone have any to try and invite them here? We were just saying, go to the unitingus.org website. www.unitingus. U n i t i n g u s. dot org, and join us. Um, Sarah's going to join us, and yes. that way she's eligible to be in the art shows that we have at Community Forklift, at, at uh, the airports, um, and we've got other things coming up in town. We've had, we had like five or six things going on at once, and we've done this all during the pandemic. Yeah, I know. So, yeah, and, but it's because we're collaborating with people who kind of get it, right? Yeah. And so, yeah, the art making and the community, it's about both things, really. So, yeah, if you're looking for someone to support you and join a community and stuff like that, this might be the, joining Uniting Us would be a great place. Yes, and we stay in touch with the artists. We're trying to sell, we, we sell artwork online, so you can see what artwork's already on our website. Um, and we're pretty active. And folks at home, you're watching the first ever live makerspace, which is hosted by Maryland's Commitment to Veterans. Uh, this has been a collaboration between Community Forklift and Uniting Us, which is a veteran-centric nonprofit that uses art as a method of healing. And you can check out the websites, uh, unitingus.org, U-N-I-T-I-N-G-U-S.org, and communityforklift.org. That's C-O-M-M-U-N-I-T-Y-F-O-R-K-L-I-F-T dot org. And if we have any more questions, uh, we'll be happy to answer them. Otherwise, we're about winding down the program now. And somebody earlier had comments that were very uh, important and smart that we will finish off these projects. And you will see the results on the, the next broadcast of this. Uh, the next time we do one of these shows. Well, it's important to remember that this has all been hosted by the state of Maryland. Um, Maryland's commitment to veterans. Thank you very much, Maryland. We appreciate it. And uh, this, this pretty much wraps up our program for the evening. Uh, Uniting Us is a nonprofit organized by a collective of veterans and family who promote art making as a mode of wellness. Uh, they promote visual arts combined with personal narratives to spark discussions about life experiences and military service with community members. And also, they're a lot of fun. You don't have to talk if you don't want to. <laughs> and, uh, and thank you so much again to Community Forklift and also Maryland's commitment to veterans. Thanks for joining our first live presentation hosted by Maryland's commitment to veterans. Streaming live from Community Forklift Warehouse in Hyattsville, Maryland. Thanks so much for watching, and we will be producing more of these web shows in the future. And we will let you know when they're coming. Have a great evening, everyone. Yay. 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 Yay.